Well, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you and welcome. So if you're here in this room or if you are joining us online, we're glad to have you part of this time of worship as we gather together. We come to the Lord's table each week here in the casual service, and so if you're watching from a space outside of this room, you might want to get bread and juice or wine to participate in that a little bit later in the service. And if you're here with us today, you'll have one of those little cups that has the wafer at the top and the juice below it, so it's a two-layer operation with that. Well, this has been an interesting week. And we have gone through a variety of ups and downs through this week for different kinds of reasons. And as we gather this morning, it is good to remember that in the midst of all the changes around us, God does not change. God's love, God's grace, God's strength is still available as much today as it was yesterday. And that will be the case tomorrow and the days ahead of us as well. So as we gather for worship today, Let's bear that in mind, and uh, I'll ask you to pray with me as we move into this time now. Loving God, thank you that we can gather in this place and at this time to remember you and to focus on you, and we thank you, God, that even when there's change going on around us, you stay the same. We pray that you would help us in the midst of this change, that our hearts would not get distracted, that we might remember that we are rooted in you, that we are loved by you that we are held by you and strengthened by you. So God, as we worship today, would you keep drawing our hearts closer to you and would you fill our minds and hearts and mouths with praise and thanks. Please bless this time together, we pray, through Christ our Lord, amen. You 
you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. the highest of heights to the depths of the sea. Creations revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that it sings. All exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, all struck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing God Who has told every lightning bolt where it should go Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow Who imagined the sun and gave source to its light yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night. None can fathom, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. Incomparable, unchangeable you see the depths of my heart and you love me the same you are amazing Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, 
We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life upon your love. life built on God's love, a trust in the Lord that will not be shaken. Those words sound like they were written just for us, right? And for times such as these. How good it is to know that this is the God that we approach. This is the God we worship. This is the God who wants to meet us and draw us into fellowship. As we go to some moments in prayer, let's enter that with these ideas in mind. This God's great love, this God's firm foundation. Thanks, God, that we can count on you. Thanks for the grace that pours from you. Thanks for the sturdiness that you offer, for the faithfulness that you display. Thanks that you are in control, that we don't have to worry. Things happen around us and even to us, and they're real, and we can feel them but they need not rock us away from your love. They need not distract us from your goodness and your care.
So God, as we hear about things happening around us to people that we care about, we want to lift them into your care and ask that you would be at work to bring healing, strength, wisdom, guidance. As we look at our wider world and see things happening there and some that we're happy about and others that we're concerned about, God, would you help us to keep trusting you? Would you give us wisdom to understand our world? to move in it, in it well, to know how to pray. Praise be to your holy name. God, may we walk in ways that honor you. May we keep trusting you. May we keep reaching for you, wanting your ways. Well, this week we're going to keep going in Matthew's gospel and listen to what he has for us here. We have Jesus in Jerusalem. He has been confronted by various religious leaders along the way. They've been trying to test him and trap him and make a fool of him, and they have failed at every turn. And now Jesus begins his own teaching. He's not so much answering their questions as he is offering something. The disciples have asked him a few questions and he's speaking to that, but he's also speaking to a wider group. He's there in Jerusalem at the temple and people are coming to hear him. He's talking about the world in which they live and he's talking about what is to come, particularly the return of the king. And so we're gonna step into one of his stories, one of his parables in the beginning of chapter 25 of Matthew's gospel that sits in the context of this larger teaching about what is to come. You've got a copy of this on the back of the uh, program that you may have downloaded or have picked up when you came in this morning. And you can follow along as I read these few verses. from Matthew 25, where Jesus says, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten girls who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five were foolish and five were wise, and the foolish ones took their lamps but didn't take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps, and the bridegroom was a long time in coming. So they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come and meet him. Then all the girls woke and trimmed their lamps, the foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. So the girls who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. There's a lot going on in this passage. That last line is something we want to pay attention to. Keep watch. You don't know the day or the hour. Jesus is saying the king is coming back. And as definite as that is, we don't know exactly when it's going to occur. So he's going to tell us these stories, a series of them, to get us ready. And God, as we listen to your word, we pray that you would speak to us through it, that we'd be attentive to what you have for us and shaped by what you say. Amen. So a few years ago, some years ago, uh, when our kids were still at home, Sue let us know um, kind of right at the beginning of the year that this was going to be an important birthday year for her and she would like to go on a trip with all of us. She wanted all of us to be available to go on a trip in the summer and visit Acadia National Park. She'd never been, and she thought that would be a beautiful place to go, and way up in Maine, 
to go see Acadia National Park. And she said, this is very important to me, and I want you to clear your schedules, and I want you to plan to go. And we all said, sure, what a great idea. Let's go to Acadia National Park. And that was early in the year. Her birthday was still several months off. And you know how the things go. Beginning of the year, there's stuff to do. And then the spring comes. And of course, there's lots of things to do there with the yard and the house and school and all the rest of it. And then the summer, you start to take a breath and you kind of pause a little bit and take advantage of the slower, the slower pace. And before you knew it, July had come and gone, her birthday. And then we were deep into August. And we looked at each other and said, oh, that's right. She wanted to go to Acadia. Actually, that's not what happened. Thankfully, I'm still alive. Um, no, rather, what we did was when she told us that that's what she wanted, we just sort of put that on the calendar and said, this is going to happen. And so we spent some time looking around for a place that we could stay at or near Acadia National Park. We made reservations. We made sure we could get in shape for the hiking and the biking that would be part of that trip. We saved our money. Uh, we got in the car and made the drive, and man, it just takes forever to get to the northern part of Maine. But we arrived there and had a wonderful time. And we're all still friends and um, even would like to go back. So that was a great, a great adventure for us. It took some time. It was way out in the future, but we planned for it, and when the time came, it was marvelous. Now, Jesus is telling a story about an event still future, something that is wonderful but still way out ahead and it's one that he wants people to get ready for. He tells this story, actually it's one of several stories that he will tell about some people who uh, were in various stages of preparation. There were five he identifies as um, who took this story to heart, who took this reality to heart, that there is going to be a wedding and we're going to get ready for it. And then there were five who didn't. He identifies the first five as wise, and he calls the second five foolish. Now, maybe you know people like one or the other of these, of these women, right? There are the wise ones, those who plan, and those who put stores aside, and those who are motivated by anticipation. And then there are those, and we'll use the word foolish, but realizing that that's kind of a loaded word. Um, let's talk about those who procrastinate who think it's still way off in the future, I got plenty of time, I got things to do, or who just for whatever one reason or another just find themselves getting distracted. Other things come up that sort of capture their interest and they give themselves over to that rather than remembering that this is out there and deserves some attention. Sometimes people will say, well, that's just the way I am. I am obsessive and so of course I'm gonna plan. Others say, well, I'm just kind of a seat of the pants kind of a person. I take what comes and, you know, I go where the wind blows me. That's just how I am. Or some of us will like to say to those, that's how you are. Jesus is talking about an event that is coming and for which everyone can be ready. But he's also saying with that, that getting ready will take some effort, and a failure to do so results in some consequences. So you should be aware of that as well. There are a couple more stories that will follow on this that have the same kind of theme, namely that the king is coming, and that is a time of delight. When we talk about it as a wedding with a party attached to it, that only brings up positive connotations, right? That sounds wonderful. It's a time of delight, but it's also, Jesus will tell us, a time of judgment. The same God who loves all is a God who is just, a God who will call people to account. And you need to be aware of that, Jesus is saying. And you need to be ready for that. Everyone is going to be affected by the return of the king. There are benefits to being prepared. There are consequences if we're not. And again, the good news Jesus wants to insist on is that everybody can be ready. It isn't like this is only available to a few. This is open to everyone. What he's going to explain for us through this story and those that follow 
is that what we do now helps us to get ready for what is coming down the pike. And he's trying to encourage us that in light of the king's return, we want to be involved in the king's business right now. And so we want to ask, well, what does that look like? And again, that's where these other stories help us. So for instance, Jesus in another of the parables that follows on the heel of this one about the wedding will say over a little bit later in chapter 25, uh, starting about verse 34, he will tell this story where again the king is part of the story and this time the king is speaking. And he says, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. The idea is the king is speaking to those who have done well, who have prepared well. And then they respond to the king by saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And the idea there is that getting ready to meet the king means that we are doing what pleases the king right now. The king's future return happens after we find ourselves living as the king would have us to live. And the king commends that and says, that's exactly what I was after. That kind of behavior, those sorts of commitments. And you hear what he's saying here. It has to do with caring for people, especially people who are in need. And that's no surprise to us. Jesus has been going through that sort of thing over and again in this gospel. He calls us to take care of one another, especially those who are the poor and the neglected. He's been asking his followers to love people, to love their enemies, to love their neighbors. This care is a further extension of that. And it's the kind of commitment, the kind of behavior that has us engaged in the work of the kingdom in anticipation of the king. Now that's what all of the king's followers are asked to do, what we're all of us supposed to commit ourselves to. And then we also discover that there are some specific things for each of us individually because we have different gifts, different resources, different callings from God. And so we wanna be asking ourselves if, it, if it's important for us to be involved in the work of the king what does that mean for me? It helps by starting kind of where we are. What kind of family are we a part of? Where's th what's the workplace situation that we enter on a regular basis? If there's a school that we're a part of or activities that we're engaged in, the neighborhood where we live, the church that we're attached to, what do we have? What has God given us that we bring into these settings, bring to the people who are part of them? We want to be asking that question. We want to be listening for the Lord's guidance. And as the Lord leads, we want to say yes to that, to bring our resources to bear on the needs in front of us, to be recognizing the opportunities that lie before us. Jesus' story of a wedding uses a very common experience to focus on a deeper truth. Namely, there's a coming day when something wonderful is going to happen. The Lord will return. Are you ready? Will you be ready for that? He says you can be. And those who are wise prepare for this day by being about the king's business now. They are giving themselves over to love and to care. They are being thoughtful and intentional when it comes to stewarding their resources and gifts. Jesus wants us to be wise. He wants us to look for and follow God's way, to join in what God is doing. And we have the opportunity as we move through these days, as we're waiting for the Lord's return, to anchor ourselves in God's goodness, 
to keep trusting in the certainty of God's promises, to encourage one another with this notion that the Lord will return, and then to encourage each other that between now and then, we live in ways that show we are ready for that at any moment. This notion of the Lord's return is one that gets woven through different parts of Scripture. There's a lot of attention given to our daily living, and for good reason. But there's also this firm promise that there's a coming day when life as we know it here ends and we are ushered into a new kind of existence. Jesus wants us to hear about that too and so do his other followers and apostles who write other portions of the scripture. It's one of those themes that we hear and are meant to think about and to tie ourselves to. Interesting that this even comes up uh, when we think about the Lord's table. So just another chapter further on, we were in Matthew 25 in chapter 26, we read about Jesus gathering with his disciples to enjoy this final meal together. And during that time, Jesus institutes what we call the communion, the Eucharist. Matthew tells us this, while they were eating, while they were together for this meal, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body, right? This is familiar language. And then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And then here's the phrase I want you to hear. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Even there, on the eve of his arrest that would lead to his crucifixion, Jesus is wanting to speak to his disciples and to say, there is a coming day that will be very different from this day. And in this day ahead, when the Lord returns, the Lord's going to gather all who are his and bring them together for this. Uh, it's described as a wedding feast in Scripture for this big blowout. And I'm looking forward to that, Jesus says, and I want you to be there with me. So isn't it interesting that as we come to the bread and cup of communion, we are being called to consider the crucifixion of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus, the willingness of Jesus to give himself on behalf of people like us. And we are also being invited to see here something out past the cross. Doesn't mean the cross is somehow minimized or less important, but we're meant to be able to see through it into another day when we will feast with the Lord this is an anticipation of that. It's many things, including that. And so if you want to go ahead and peel off the top layer for the bread, let's pause a moment to thank the Lord for the bread and the cup. And Lord, we're so grateful for your gifts your kindness, your faithfulness. We thank you for Jesus, this expression of your deep love. And as we come to this table, as we see this bread and this cup, we think of his death, what that signals, what that means, what that makes possible. So we give our thanks. We bring our praise. Amen. Jesus broke the bread, passed it around, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
then there was the cup filled with wine that would have looked like blood. And he said, this is, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. And in drinking it, remember me. As we commune with the Lord, as we remember the body and blood, as we reflect on the death, the sacrifice, and the impact, may this continue to shape our lives, to affect the way we think, how we behave. And God, would you please Give us strength as we eat and drink to remember the Lord, to build our lives on this one who is steady and faithful, who is good and true. Receive our thanks, God. We're so grateful for the love you have shown, for the rescue that you have effected, for the freedom and the life that you make possible through Christ our Lord. Amen.
when temptation comes my way. And when I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. And when I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, Till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so. Every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest days. There are ghosts like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after, it's running after me your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness 
Jesus is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. You're my firm foundation I know I can stand secure Jesus, you're my firm foundation I put my hope in your holy word I put my hope in your holy word And I have a living hope I have a living hope I have a future I have a future God has a plan for me of this I'm sure, of this I'm sure, Jesus, you're my firm foundation, I know I can stand secure, and Jesus, you're my firm foundation, I put my hope in your holy word, I put my hope in your holy word, and your word is faithful, your word is faithful, mighty in power. I'm sure of this I'm sure Jesus you're my firm foundation I know I can stand secure Jesus you're my firm foundation I put my hope in your holy word I put my hope in your holy word and Jesus you're my firm foundation I know I can stand secure That's the song that you need to sort of give a hearty amen. So in the age of COVID, we'll just go, ready? Close. Okay. There's a coming day. There's a coming day. Well, as we get ready to go today, a couple of things. Um, first, this notion of caring for the poor and the neglected. One of the ways we do that here at St. Thomas is through our community impact team. And so if you're aware of people with needs, or if you're wanting to help out in uh, times when there are needs, then would you please get in touch with Wanda Schaefer, who is with us this morning and can be reached through our office as well. Um, then secondly, one of the groups that we support financially is the Christian Churches United that works out of Harrisburg. They are having their fall fundraiser this week on Tuesday evening. And uh, one of the great things about their fundraiser is they have people come and give testimonies about ways that this organization has helped them. So we have a part in that as a church, and if you've got some time on Tuesday evening, want to dial into that, you can find information on our website as well as on theirs about how to connect with that. If you came today with an offering, we have a basket on the back. If you want to be mailing an offering in or using our online portal, you can do that as well. And then let's close on these words from the Apostle Paul, who writes what uh, is good to hear.
during a season that uh, continues to be up and down for many, that evokes different kinds of emotions and responses. Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 4, don't be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And then this, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So as you go today, bear this in mind, that the Lord is for you, the Lord is with you, and the Lord has what you need for what lies ahead. Amen. Amen. Amen.